The HPV vaccine depended on a technology that we invented for a vaccine where we couldn't grow a virus in the laboratory. We came up with a way of using genetic engineering to make something that looked like the virus so that the body could fight it, but wasn't actually an infectious virus. And that took about a year of work. My colleague Jan Zhu and I came up with a way of engineering cells to produce the proteins that make the shell of the virus and the body sees the shell as enough to spark off an immune response which protects you against the infection that causes cervical cancer. The technology was basically a chance finding in the sense that we knew what we wanted to do, we wanted to make something that looked like the virus, but there was no guarantee that we could succeed in that when we tried very many different ways to try and get there, which failed and then eventually one worked, so in a sense, yes, there was a eureka moment at that point. We were reasonably confident that if we could get something that mimicked the virus, that looked like the virus, but wasn't actually a virus, then that would induce the right sort of immunity in the body to protect against infection. There was some prior evidence to that effect because people had been using dead viruses for a long time to get there, and this was equivalent of a dead virus, although not quite. But we never really knew for sure it would work until we saw the results of the clinical trial. Look, the initial ideas that started this whole process off uh, were thought up in the course of a few weeks. They took about a year to turn into something practical, which was the actual virus-like particle, the shell of the virus. A couple of years of animal work showed that in principle this would probably be the right way to go. And then 10 years of clinical trials, which had to incorporate scaling up the process. It's easy to make a little bit of it in a test tube. It's quite another matter to make enough swimming pools full, if you like, of vaccine material so you get enough to vaccinate half the planet, which is what we ideally need to do. Look, the biggest challenge for the vaccine was to persuade industry that there would be a market for a vaccine. When we did the work that led to the virus-like particle, we felt that if there was going to be a vaccine, then this would be how it would be done. But what we didn't know was whether the market was big enough to justify a company investing the one to two billion dollars that it takes to take a product that's in the bottle and take it out to market. And fortunately, the companies themselves took on that research agenda and found out what we didn't know, that uh, this was in fact an extraordinarily common infection. We thought it was a rare infection which commonly caused cancer. It turned out to be a very common infection which rarely causes cancer and that meant that there was a market because if it was a very common infection people would want to be protected whereas if it was a rare infection it would be hard to justify the cost. There is an important message. The innovation comes up about because Previously, people have done the basic science that it makes it possible. Investing in the basic science is a key requisite for making sure that we can get innovative product out. And it's always a team effort. Nobody does it on their own anymore. We build on the building blocks that other people have put in place. And in turn, when we've done our bit, we pass it on to others who can take it the next step. And I think that the that's a message for Queensland. It's a message globally. We need to make sure we invest it adequately across all the components of the chain of innovation to make sure we get the benefit of them. At one level it's great to see something that can be done about the fact that a quarter of a million women die of cervical cancer every year worldwide and now we can stop that. I mean, that, that obviously makes me feel that the effort that we put in was worth the bother. Uh, at another level it's really quite good to be able to show to my colleagues and my students and postdocs that if you put the effort into science, something useful can come out the other end of it. And it's not everybody that gets the chance to go from idea to discovery to product out there to seeing it used on a global basis in their lifetime. And I think that's really a message that I'd like to send out to a lot of scientists and say that you can do it too.